Hey everyone, welcome to Mindset Talks, Life Beyond the Checkboxes. We're your co-host, John Jaramillo. I'm a leadership performance coach. I'm Prati Kaufman. I'm an entrepreneur and a marketing energy coach. And the purpose of this series is that we want to talk about kind of like everyday conversations. So Prati and I are both coaches in our respective fields, uh, me in leadership, her in marketing and energy and performance. Uh, but there are things that go beyond that. They're everyday conversations that we want to cover here. Just everyday topics that we pick from one episode to the next and just kind of riff on it. Just see what comes to mind. Uh, coaching can be very targeted, very step oriented, very procedural. Uh, you do put feeling into it, but it's more about making sure you hit the proper steps where this is more free flowing. It's more whatever may come to mind. We pick a topic, we go at it from our different perspectives. I mean, we're so different in terms of where we were born, the work that we do, uh, the sizes of our family, and all these little factors play into how we see things in the everyday. So that's the kind of introduction that we want to give to you in this particular episode. So in this episode, we want to break down what it was that brought us to, um, to this particular series. And I'll start off because I think it was a question that I had to her based on a comment that I saw she posted on LinkedIn where she was speaking to students. And Prada, you can fill in the details um, in a second. But essentially, she said that, and I believe this is what it was, Prati, that the, the students that she had spoken to were surprised by how she spoke about failure or how open she was or how vulnerable she was. So when I saw that post, I thought it was very inspiring and motivating just to have those real conversations. And I forget if it was her or me that um, had kind of come up with this idea to, to tape these conversations about real topics. But I thought that was inspiring. And I think it's it's those are the kind of conversations that I think benefit everyone where people may think you have a certain facade to you and that's what it is. But there's so much work that goes into what uh, you're expressing to others. So Prati, if you... Can you break down for the listeners, for the viewers, that particular day, the one that you shared, the one that I commented on where you were speaking to that class and then what their reaction was on that? If you could just elaborate on that, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I remember I was a guest lecturer in, in one of the colleges, you know, lo local community colleges in Massachusetts. And, you know, you, you come across at this age, you know, you're successful, you have, you know, a life together and things. And one of the questions was like, what happened to the fear here? Like, do you still have the fear of all the things? And I'm like, every single day you wake up and you're like, and uh, what am I doing? And, but the, the fact is you have to go in spite of that. Like that's what the courage basically is. So just because you're at some place doesn't mean you don't have fear. So I was just saying this is, is part of your process. It's part of your life. It never really goes away. It just, why do you believe how your why becomes so much bigger than your fears then you wake up and you still want to do what you love just because you love what you do and again your why becomes way bigger than fear and that but fear is always going to be there and they were very surprised to hear that i still fear public speaking i still fear pretty much everything i do is i'm not just like oh i'm so comfortable doing this yeah yeah uh I can relate just in speaking, you get those nerves beforehand. I think anybody kind of has to shake off those nerves at the very beginning. And then in a few in a few moments, uh, you kind of find your flow and you go from there. And then at the end, you kind of just wake up from it because you've gotten into talking about what your passion is. But you're right. I mean, everything that I've done, whether it's my business, whether it's this series, my other series, um, you go in and you have that fear, but it's like, if you don't do it, you're gonna regret it later. So there may be a lot of people that cave to it. I've caved to that feeling in the past. I think just with life experiences at this point, it's kind of like, if I don't do this, like this is what makes me happy. These kind of conversations, interviewing people, having these conversations with my colleagues, with my friends, my good friends, what what are you gonna wait for? If you don't do it, uh, what are you gonna what are you waiting for so that's what we want to talk about here is just all different kind of topics just giving our perspective it's not that uh we believe that ours is the way to go but we we're both people that when we get together we love having these conversations about where we're coming from our experiences and just sharing that with people uh i mean did i hit it on the head Prati? what do you what do you think what do you want to achieve out of this um 
out of our conversations that we share with people. It really is of all what is like you you check there's a checkbox, right? It's we are given in life. Like you're gonna do this, 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 this. But what life is beyond those, I really believe you learn beyond those checkboxes. That's where your growth happens, your your life and we all live so differently. And that's what I think we are bringing it together. Even work-life balance, like what is it? How does it look like for different people? How, how do you define that for someone if you're not living their life? So yes, we can write a whole book about it, but at the end of the day, you know, what is it which looks like for me? And I think those, those are the things, yes, they are check boxes, yes. but you have to find who you are beyond that. And then you create your own check boxes, almost like you have to first do whatever the standard process is and decide, you know, it's working for you and then go. So that's where we are really coming from is the mindset talks is, this life beyond the check boxes. So you check the boxes, but still find yourself within yes. that. I think that's perfect. I, it's like so many things, so many other things, coaching or not coaching related, any kind of process you carry out, you want to start with the basics that you have to get done, but then you want to customize it. Then you want to break it down to how it appeals to you, how it relates to you. So that's an that's an awesome way to put it in terms of, yes, beyond those checks check boxes, getting those check boxes done. But then there are little ideas, little conversations that you can have uh, in between, because even though those boxes are standard across everybody, their experience, like you said, you could put it in a book, but the way that people take information away from it is going to be so different. So that's where people can get lost. They just look at the steps. They look at the check boxes. They think, okay, some may think that's all I need to do. Others may think, okay, I've done those. Now what? Um, and again, it's just so open because we're all so different, but hopefully some of these conversations resonate just based on different perspectives. I mean, what's been your experience in the last year? How, how might have conversations have evolved for you during the pandemic? Cause I think that's a big thing that's shown me that it's shown me is that, uh, people want to have deeper conversations. People want to get to the heart of different matters. I mean, everything in, in life, in our country specifically, I mean, all over the world is just, it's so tough right now with everything that's going on and it's hard for people to express themselves or we express ourselves in the wrong way. Um, so I think it's a good example just to kind of open it up and, and have these conversations for others to see. But what have you taken away from the pandemic? Is there anything that's kind of made your conversations better or your interactions with your clients, your friends, your family better? That's a really good question. I never thought about it. it was different because, you know, you basically, I, you know, I, I need a second to think like that's, yeah. that's the question. Like how did pandemic change the conversation? I don't know, honestly, because I just feel like we always crave deeper conversation as human beings. That's what we're here for for experiences of life, which comes because of we hang out with others, our growth, expansion, whatever you call that, the soul thrives on that, okay? We are here because of others, even though we are here for ourselves. I feel like we're so intertwined with the people around the world or, you know, as a universal energy. So, but I just feel like maybe people are more open to talk about it because life was so busy and they didn't have time to pause and really think what matters. So pandemic did change that just one tiny bit, if I have to think about it, is people are talking more about what matters to them than ever before. I don't yes. know if your experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I just wanna make reference that, you know, you've, we've talked about fear, we've talked about fear of failure, referenced it here, we've talked about imposter syndrome, we've talked yeah. about conversations, all all of these are the kind of things that are going to have their own episode where we just pick a topic like those I just listed and go for it. But yeah, you're right. I mean, and the other one is pausing. That was one of the episodes that we did was the importance of just pausing. Um, and you nailed it perfectly where the pandemic has kind of forced us to pause. And when you are limited to what you can do specifically in person to person, now you got to depend more on, let's call it another sense, like your, your two dimensional conversations, this kind of thing right here. So you have to make up for that. You don't have that physical cue. You don't have those social cues. You don't have, you can't, when you're in person, you can, you can build off of what you get from the person. 
their posture, how they're leaning into you. But now you kind of have to depend on just a face talking to you. So now it's kind of like you have to ask a little more. You have to tell a little more, a little more so that people know where you're coming from. So that's a that's such a great point that because we had to pause, we had to step back. Now we have to depend on richer, richer themes and richer talking points to make up for that lack of in-person communication. True. And I think with this, I mean, we're, I think you and I, we're, we're very straightforward. We're very honest. So people are going to see a lot of honesty, a lot of vulnerability, a lot of different perspectives in this conversation. I mean, I'm open to that just because you may go through life thinking, oh, I can't let people see me this way. And I promise I'm not going to cry, Prati. But uh, you may think you may go through life thinking, you know, I can't share certain ideas because it'll make me sh uh, seem vulnerable or weak or like I don't know what I'm talking about or like I don't have control. I don't have control. I don't have control. You know, a hundred percent of the time, I I I don't have a hundred percent of the of the time control on what I'm doing. Um, but that's that's what I think is is important is just being transparent about. Listen, I'm a work in progress. I just want to spitball ideas and talk and see what I can learn from this conversation. So that's what I hope to gain. That's a great, great way to put it. I mean, just come and listen to us and, and tell us, you know, what you think about it and what topics you want to talk about too. We are pretty open. We really want to just bring daily honest conversations to you. And that's that's the whole goal of Mindset Talks, Life Beyond Check Boxes is some of those topics which may be little little sensitive to talk about, you know, and we have different opinions. I mean, just expressing that and putting it out there without any judgment of, you know, you, you, you got to still be deciding for yourself, but just, just starting a different conversation, I, I guess. And Prati, just based on that, like what we want to bring to people, why don't you give me a little bit of a, or I know it, but why don't you share a little bit of your background, um, however much you want of your background that's led you to the work that you've done and then the work that you're doing, just so people get a sense of, they know my title, they know your title, but why don't we give a little more perspective of what we do that way they understand where we're coming from when we have those conversations. Oh, so I'm gonna be very brief about it because yeah. you know, if, if they wanna learn more, I'm sure they can you know check Google the names and you know check the website. But I grew up in India just so that you know to, to give a perspective where we, we we got water once every four days, we had to use outhouse. I did not learn English till I was in college. What I, you know, and then just going through life and where I got, you know, one of the, some of the major, major events in my life was like moving to Dubai without knowing anybody and just 15 days to get a job. And I you know it's, it's just that trust in, in, in the bigger power beyond me. I trusted and I would just move through it without thinking much. So my decisions were never thought out properly i would make a decision and then i'm like i'm going to move and then you know whatever happens i i i i'll see so and then i met my husband online you know and after eight months of chatting he came to meet me two days after he proposed a week after we were engaged two months after we were married <laughs> then moved to america you know 16 years ago now so life has always been like this quitting the job just sitting in a cubicle and deciding i just can't do it and the next day handing the res you know, resignation letter again without knowing what next. So I have lived my life really from that perspective that things will always work out and having that trust that anything is possible and you know whatever I do, there's somebody who's going to take like things things are going to line up. Has it been easy? No. It has a path is just filled with challenges, but I think that's what has made the journey so beautiful and there's so much growth because of there was so much struggle. There was so much of that wanting more than what life was giving me, the de deep desire, strong desire that there's more to life than what I know and I need to trust it. So that is my inertial, a little story of me and why I have become a um, why I combine this mindset and the marketing and the energy coaching together, because I really think that that's where the magic is when you align everything with who you are. Absolutely. And then for me, um, Patty and I, uh, Patty and I have talked about our, our immigrant stories where she had come from India. My parents had come from Colombia. So a lot of that we've said plays into who we are and that that'll be yet another episode just breaking down how those immigrant stories and experiences have contributed to who we are 
But for me, yeah, I mean, my parents were blue collar workers. They came here before I was born, before my sister was born. Uh, and I, I, I worked my first few jobs were working in a factory, working in a hotel. Um, I was the first one to go to college, had no idea what I wanted to do because my parents being immigrants and blue collar workers, they were just surrounded by people of the, the same demographic, like uh, immigrants working hard in factories, blue collar work. So I didn't have exposure to many fields. So I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I've told this story before, but um, so they wanted me to go to college. They wanted me, you know, they came here for a better life. The typical immigrant story, come here for a better life, make a better life for your kids. Uh, so then they wanted me to go to college. They wanted me as far away from a factory as possible. So I picked, I'm, I'm like business. Okay. I mean, and, and keep in mind, I had no exposure to anything else. Meanwhile, all my friends there at school were like kids of like lawyers, doctors, this and that. Uh, but in any case, um, I didn't declare my major until my junior year because I just had no real idea, no real exposure to anybody in any particular field, but I wanted to get away from the factory. So business that was in my head. And then I loved psychology because I was always an introvert as a kid and just overthinking everything. So I'm like, okay, what can I mix? What can I combine these two to do? And the first thing that popped up was marketing. Uh, so I went into marketing, worked in, uh, uh, the city in New York City for a little bit, and then 9 11 happened. So I ended up coming back to Connecticut. Uh, and then I found a job with the state of Connecticut as a, a budget analyst. So I was there for a long time. Uh, and I ended up going back to school when I found out that there was a field for organizational development. Again, I didn't have that kind of exposure that most people most people would probably have. So I went for a master's in organizational psychology. And then I always wanted an MBA. So I just transferred those credits and went from the MBA. And it was between those two that I started coaching people because people were just asking what the hell organizational development was. I, I'm glad I wasn't the only one, but they would ask questions and then they'd ask more questions. And then it just kind of rippled from there. Uh, I also have a certificate in mediation and none of these things seem like they're lined into each other. I call it a mishmash of experience, but it served me well because I'm doing what I'm doing now. And all of that applies, whether it's the marketing, the organizational development, the MBA, the, the certificate in mediation, um, all of that applies to what I bring to my clients just because I think it's, it's well-rounded. It all ties in, but it's very different and it's, it's picked up a lot lately because I've just realized people aren't good at branding their, themselves or their leadership. So now I'm working even more in just leadership branding, leadership design, because I don't think people are bringing the best of who they are to their job description, whether it's a job or, or the business. I think we leave a lot on the table. So that's the kind of work that I'm doing. And that's you know just the kind of insight that I want to bring to this conversation. Again, probably like you said, all those experiences factor into who we are now. So why don't we share that in a conversation, see how those those different paths of ours kind of come together and synergize into something that we can share with others. And that's that's what my hope is. Same here. So we are always looking for topics. We'll obviously we'll have our own. We'll bring you what we think of in that week. But uh, our information is on the screen. We'll share it where we post these. There'll be videos as well as audio. Uh, it's a video and audio series, so you'll have both options. Please subscribe where you want, whether it's YouTube or Spotify or Google Podcasts, wherever it may be, uh, and reach out to us because I think at some point we'd like to bring on some guests, whether or not they want to talk about or add a perspective to something we've already talked about or bring a new topic that they'd love to discuss with us. We, like Prati mentioned, we're open for any kind of conversation. She and I are very, I, I believe it's like the immigrant thing where we're just very, we lay it all out. We, I know in, in my culture, the Colombian culture, everybody's just very straightforward, sometimes too blunt. Um, but there's no need for us to kind of hide what we want to talk about. It is a, a very respectful space. So we're open to any kind of conversation, but yeah, please follow along. Uh, this is going to be a journey. It's going to be a trial and error, but we're going to have fun with it and we're going to see what we come up with. All right. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care.